Hi everyone, in this video we're going to prove something that is very useful to use in higher level mathematics. So we have two functions, f maps a to b, g maps b to c, and o is a subset of c. And we're going to prove this equality of sets. So let me recall what this symbol means. So if you have, say, let me use different letters here. Say you have a function h from, say, capital X to capital Y and you take a subset, say, D contained in Y. So the inverse image of H under, or rather, inver the inverse image of D under H would be equal to the set of all elements in capital X, such that H of X is an element of D. So this would be the definition. So we're going to use this extensively. In particular, let's write down exactly what it means for something to be in the set. So when you take an element in this set, so if x is in the inverse image of d under h, that means that h of x is in d. Likewise, if h of x is in d, then x is in the set. So this is equivalent to saying that x, that h of x is in d. So I'm going to put this in a box because we're going to use this extensively in the proof. So whenever we have this, we have this. What is this, by the way? Um, I'll, I'll show you really quickly. So this is x, and, and then this is, this is y, and so then d is here, right? d is a subset of y according to this, so this is, this is your big D here. And so this is a subset of, of capital X, so this here would be your inverse image of d under h. And so what is it? Well, it's the, all of the x's in capital X that, that get mapped here, so every single element here get sent to some y value that resides in, in D. So it's all of the x's that actually get mapped to D. It's called the pre-image or the inverse image of the set under the function. Let's go ahead and do this proof. Uh, also note that GOF does make sense. F takes A to B, G takes B to C. So when you're working at GOF, you first apply F. So it takes A to B. So and then G takes all the elements in B, sends them to C. So uh, GOF uh, makes sense, everything is okay. So proof. Let's just do it. Let's do it all at once. Let's just go through it all at once. So for any x, so for any x, we have, you know, for any x that satisfies, you know, this condition. So as long as x is in this set, I'm going to use the biconditional arrows to do this. So if x is in this set, so x is in GOF inverse of O, so what does this mean? This is equivalent okay, to saying that GOF of X is an O. Let me pause here and explain this carefully. So if X is in here, then GOF of X is an O. It's kind of like this, right? If X is an H inverse of D, H of X is in D. Same thing here, your H is the GOF. Okay, so this is equivalent to saying, now let's, let's apply GOF. GOF is actually G of F of X. So it's G of F of X is in O. Okay, so we have that G of F of X is in O. Okay, so G of F of X is in O means, means that F of X is in G inverse of O. Let me pause here and explain this again. So if f of x is in g inverse of o, that means g of f of x is in o. Same thing, right? Applying this definition once again. But what does this mean? This means that x is in f inverse of g inverse of o. So we have that if x is in this set, x is in this set. And it goes both ways. So the sets must be equal. So thus, equality is, this is a fun word, established, <laughs> established. You do need to really think about these steps when you're going through this. You need to have some level of mastery or comfortableness with this definition. And, and how do you get that? Just, just by doing lots of proofs, right? So it takes, it takes a long time to just be able to see all of this. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. Take care.